everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsRevelease.com. CardsRevelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOKABROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to a special episode of the CHOKABROS. I'm your host, Sam Snape Prime. And I'm Zach Bro. And this week we will be going through the top 10 things you should expect to see at the Tampa Crystal Cup coming up in just, what, two weeks? Two weeks. Two it's short weeks. 13 days or... 12 days something like that something like that not enough time yeah no not enough time at all (laughs) but uh all right let's jump right in so we have a list of uh you know cards things you know other symbols or icons (laughs) yeah we'll uh we'll start off with people trying to respond at end step yeah so this is number 10 and this is specifically talking about death machine death machine um i've played a lot of death machine and I can say there's a lot of times that when I'm like, go to instep, and my opponent's like, yes. And then I will select something, and they will try to respond. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should I should say I won't select. I will choose something during their turn or during my own turn. I Or the opposite. During my turn, I will choose something. During their turn, I will select something. Mm-hmm. They will select something. Man, I will select something. Okay, yeah. I got it all backwards myself. <laughs> uh, point being is that at that point, it is too late to do anything. You cannot tighten your guy you cannot bounce your guy with leviathan or my guy yeah there's no yeah. like delete attack where you choose it as a target and then response break it for something else and you know you don't lose as much correct. so correct can maybe if... see some of that and we expect to see some death machine uh we've seen people talk about it uh it's a card that's you know worth playing uh right so yeah right and th- and all those those things happen are mandatory so mm-hmm. you can't be like well go to end step okay i'll discard Oops, i Wait. forgot yeah you, you or i forgot to death machine though you have to do it and the discard happens last um so that's important the other end step thing to keep in mind also which we didn't talk about but is lebronian um you oh, will sure, still yeah. have to discard down to hand size um in all cases or in that the could get awkward the, with vikings yeah. like if someone breaks their viking thinking oh i'm gonna have an extra card and then yeah, or similar <laughs> in a similar state, if someone has Scale Toad and mm-hmm. you have Lebronian, you will discard first and then draw your card for Lebronian since both your triggers go on at the same time and yours resolves last. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's number 10. So coming in at number 9, we have Garland triggers being missed. <laughs> both ways. I, I see this happening both, both ways. ways. I, yeah. see, I see my opponent drawing two cards. There's something I see myself doing if I was going to play Garland deck and then discarding and well hold on you know i like to think about things and 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 be like you know what i'm gonna freeze this with garland well no you're definitely past that step once you've moved to pay for something but i don't know how they'll rule it that'll be interesting because you haven't done anything you haven't said anything and i don't remember you know off the top of your head if it's a may trigger i don't think it is i think you have to choose something Uh, you choose and you pay it resolution Okay, so you can't actually forget that trigger, and your opponent can't use that I so. as a means of saying, yeah, I just looked. Your opponent selects one. Okay. If you're <laughs> one character, you may pay ice if you do freeze it. Yep. You can choose your own things and then just not pay. If oh, you that's interesting. If you wanted to freeze your own thing, I guess you could. I but, guess if your opponent uh, has just a Dottaluma and you really don't want to lose your Garland or something. <laughs> right, you could you could just freeze your own guy. or yeah. I mean, not even freeze, you could just choose your own guy and not pay. Mm-hmm. That being said, you can't miss it, so I, I still feel like that's going to be one of the most crazy amount of judge calls we see. Um, well, my opponent missed that trigger. Well, you can't actually miss it. So it's kind of like Camelot no, a little bit. I think there's no think... incentive. Yeah, there's no well, there's no incentive to be like, well, you didn't choose something, so I assumed you weren't choosing anything. Well, you can't. You right. have to choose something. So even at that point, that ability is going to go on the stack, and your opponent's going to be able to do it. Hopefully, the game will be re- rewindable. Um, mm-hmm. But keep that in mind. That's that's. That's really important. That's number nine. So coming in at number eight, uh, the little spider himself, Lava Spider. Now, I've seen a lot of mixed conversation about this on Facebook and different groups. Some people say the card is busted. Some people say the card is awful and it's overhyped. What are your thoughts on it so far, Sam? Um, Lava Spider is really good. Um, it's something you don't ever want to see on the other side of the table, particularly if you play slower decks like I do, uh, grindier um earth water decks um <laughs> you really don't want to see lava spider because it like matches the size of your guys like one of the reasons gigas is so good because it's a nine it's a 9k 4 cp card yep. that can't be shantotoed or, or dealt with during certain t- t- like phases of the game um but lava spider just kind of puts their little shitty guys up to your <laughs> level um particularly something like alpha Nod. so it's yeah. really scary 
that being said, I think we have it on this list because we think that people are going to misplay. That too. Not, not <laughs> understanding that your guy's buffs is only while it's attacking. It so always as happens. soon as you go back to attack prep to attack with something else, your guy shrinks. So if they took lethal damage, they die before more attacks happen. So Right. It's only while it's attacking. Um, and so... And that lasts all the way through EX Burst, to be fair, though. Yep. Uh, there is a priority to... window post-EX Burst, like post-damage before you go to attack prep, which is important for Correct. guys like Sabin. They can special or after min, you see the damage. Yep, or... like, like so that your guy doesn't die to Minwoo if they were to oh, sure. yep. Brynhiddle it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. That's a good point. Yeah, so if, if, if Brynhiddle was an EX Burst hit and then your guy wouldn't die... Because your guy was 8 or something and they didn't Correct. pay it before, yeah. Right, so... But... Also, keep in mind that that means that your guy's going to die if it's an 8k attacking into a 7k. Mm -hmm. um, if it's an 8k from the Lava Spider, if it's originally right, like right. a... Yeah. Um, that being said, you can avoid all of these misplays by simply just playing Alpha Nod. <laughs> and then your opponents can never block. Um, and then you get to go into easy mode. Yep. So, I guess tip number eight uh, for things you should expect to see is either a Lava Spider misplays or a Lava Spider and Alpha Nod. Because not That's playing Alpha Nod with the Lava Spider is a misplay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So. All right. So coming in at number seven, we have triggers not being vocal, vocal, leading to losses. Now, this is important to note for cards like Rain, and for those of you those who are familiar with the 2017 was it Scandals of Worlds, the Garnet triggers. Um, was that 17, 2018? I have no it's idea when that was. So fast. I guess technically it's 2017. Um, those types of triggers, those auto triggers, are not something that need to be announced. When you attack with your rain, you do not need to say, my whole team is plus 9k, your team is minus 2k. It is, it plus 9k? A, Oof. Uh, plus 2k, sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking rain becomes a 9k. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is not only just assumed, it just happened. Period. Right. You can't stop it. Your opponent can't stop it. Without it, something like it now, it does go on the stack, so like people can respond to it. Correct. But the way the rules yeah. are written, they, they don't necessitate you to announce them necessarily so if if your opponent wants to respond to it they have to be cognizant of what's happening sure which is unfortunate it's, it's, to, and sometimes it leads to feel bads but it, it, it's just that that's what it is it is but but shortcuts happen all the time in the game mm -hmm. and they're a necessary evil you really like paying costs be, almost yeah exclusively well, was it almost always shortcut sure yeah but even more so it just announcing everything always like okay attack prep attack step attack it's like no, no like if you have something to do during my attack prep just tell me you know like which side note it's interesting because if people start breaking it down you know they have something <laughs> a lot of the times yeah. yeah but point being is that like it's acceptable to attack with rain and not say anything and when my opponent does that i'm obviously going to assume that their rain is now a 9k plus whatever other mm -hmm. field abilities are on the the thing or effects are left over ovelia is just chilling back there yeah right <laughs> So, but I expect a certain amount of games to be lost, people not realizing the rain trigger. And I put Garnet on here because I could, I do see Garnet being uh, played in the top cut of the of the Crystal Cup. Anyone playing um, in the Octane Open, I've heard some things about Garnet. <laughs> Garnet is so. good. It's going to make a comeback. I really do believe that. And people are going to lose games to not remembering that there's a trigger from it. I can agree. So then number six. Zidane drawing cards. And we are obviously referring to the new 2CP Water Zidane that draws cards when it hits you in the face. Yeah, I we have this one at number six um, because we think that there's going to be a, a certain amount of players that just don't realize how Zidane works and they just allow him to get in free hits. Especially um, if someone plays him turn one and then the right. next turn they draw up to six and, oh, whoops, forgot he's unblockable. <laughs> Right. right, so we'll just get right down to number five, Zidane dying. <laughs> yes. um, because it's a Crystal Cup, I expect more Zidanes to die than they are to draw cards. Um, I think that the majority of players will come prepared, and so you will see Zidanes dying. Um, yes. Number four, Scions sideways. Scions is just, anyone who's come from Magic, it's the Jun deck. Like, it's just always going to be there. You're always going to have to worry about it. They're going to be beating your face down with these undercosted, oversized things. Uh, it's just a it's a good deck. I mean, it, you, they get all the fight, good fight spells like the Hecaton Shares and Titans. If they want to go that route, they can go kind of a more like hybrid route now with other packages. And There's a lot of cool Fordola, stuff. Fordola is an excellent card for the Fordola, deck. To like, yeah. give it, uh, like a certain end game, if, if 
Like yeah, sometimes you get rid of Louis. If someone Fall. were to like, yeah, well, if someone were to, that's good too. But if someone were to like get rid of your Alisai a lot of times, and you lose your haste, like the deck loses a lot of its punch. Mm-hmm. Well, this is something that's like really big. No matter the number of scions you have, gets rid of Louis. Fall, but I also is always going to have haste and always be a threat that they have to worry about. Yep. Um, seems really really important. Uh, the other thing about that deck is that it now can be built actually in a variety of different ways. So you don't know if they're playing off not back up or they're playing off not forward, if they're being more aggressive, if they're being more controlling, if they're playing more of the EX version line of game. Um, they're going the more the Yuri Anje Lava Spider Monster style uh, deck. So I expect at number four, we will see a lot of Scions sideways at the <laughs> Tampa Crystal Cup. Yes. Then uh, number three, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles backups. So I think everyone at this point has realized North Stalin can search a lot of cards. <laughs> and yep. that could be in Mono Wind, uh, finding Alhanalem, which is a huge card in the meta, especially last set, and I'm sure still going into this set. Uh, finds Illyria, which finds Yuri, which is still a good card. Uh, it also finds Chilinka, but I'm, I like Yuri. <laughs> uh, it also finds other off-color things like Meath and uh what's the searcher epitaph the earth yep. one so like it has searches all these different chime. splash colors searches chime if you want to play water so there's a yep. lot of interesting routes that uh package can take and i think that a lot of people are going searches, to go to it because uh, it's just so consistent ton betty ton betty yeah that's another spicy Which one goes and gets mira and ton berries so yeah so i expect to see a lot of it uh whether or not people break it i don't know i but it's just a nice yep. consistent backup package that i think a lot of people are using it it is it is worth noting that our honorable mention at number 11 was mono wind being mm-hmm. that it, the most losses <laughs> um i think that mono wind could be a very very good deck but that it kind of auto plays itself and that um it's gonna die to aggro yeah i think that people are just gonna come expecting it. and the fact that we have scion sideways mm-hmm. i think that scions they're just gonna be too aggressive for it also um, along that same line with aggression number two is mono lightning and top cut top 32 right yeah mono lightning decks in top 32 um as a sheer number i think that yeah. mono lightning will represent the highest number of decks and top cut mm-hmm. closely followed by ice fire oh okay not not because i think that ice fire is um as good of a deck it's gonna thrash it all is, those mono is, wins and it the is tested. it did very <laughs> well stuff. for the california guys um you know they got first second and like fourth or something like that um so they had a great showing it's been doing well it, i know it won like ryan solarski his uh his regional event um so it's doing really well um so i expect people to default to it i just expect lightning to kill all of its guys so <laughs> i think that lightning will have a fun time at the tampa top cut so yes that leads to uh number one Mm-hmm. Well emojis. <laughs> I expect well emojis to be in force at the Tampa Crystal Cup. You will find them everywhere, I assure you. Be ready for it. <laughs> Actually, the hat looks really good. It does look really good. It's like yeah, I'm really it's excited. like borderline metallic. It looks fantastic. Yeah, I chose the colors specifically actually. Hmm. They have like all these different threads you can use fantastic what yeah, caps anyway. off our uh, list of 10 things to expect <laughs> to see at tampa crystal cup yeah. uh i have been zach burrell i'm sam Snipe prime and we'll see you next time hey everybody thanks for taking the time to listen to the chuckle bros podcast be sure to drop us a like and comment on our facebook page or subscribe and comment on the youtube page if you have any comments and suggestions especially about cody's awesome hair feel free to drop us a dm and of course don't forget to check out cosby and use promo code choco bros to get 10 percent off your next order